Abby Mayer is segment two, North Town Neighborhood News Magazine. Check us out on the web, ntm.org, community policing caps 24.org. It is a pleasure to introduce you to one of my favorite urban artists, the pride of Uptown. Oh, well, yeah. And um, I mean, you ought to really check him out on Facebook because I really think his stuff is absolutely stunning. And um, very Chagall-like, and I, I'm a big Chagall fan, even though I'm not the best art appreciator in the world. And that is, of course, you've seen him before on the show, Jeffrey Littleton. Hey, Jeffrey, how are you doing? Hey, good to see you. Happy to be back. My pleasure. And uh, what's, what, what are your latest artistic endeavors? Uh, lately, I've been doing my same, um, I don't know, I've been trying to like do more rail, like remember my rail map? Yeah. I'm trying to get a little more uh, fine-tuned on that. I'm trying to make it into a, a show I want to do next year. And uh, the latest one I did, and it was cool because I already sold it before I got off to use it, which is kind of rare. But I know people are going to like it. It's going to be it's real hot. I, uh, I got an idea when I saw these, like, icons. Um, you ever see those Greek icons where you got the gold in the background? Yeah. So, okay, now I'm not going to put too much spirituality into it. But uh, I just got that idea of using, because, you know, with my rail master, the background. So now I'm doing, like, a gold background on those. So it's kind of hard to say, you know, like, um, you know, like I, you know, I haven't been doing, like, too many community projects lately because it's been, like, kind of... Kind of messed up there's not really too much going on you know it seems to be getting really stalled in uptown so i haven't been really doing too much I, what i've been doing is um just inside preston bradley center like my you know with the drawing i've right. organized the drawing i got the girls coming posing you know and it's like that's just starting so that's kind of um that's a good thing but um but i just haven't been that, that active because um this isn't that much going on like in next year on argyle i'm gonna try to get out more with my uh with my tent and just try to just kind of just do my own thing and avoid politics because it's just really messy yeah, I wish I had more, more on the plate. You know, I was at a, um, I was at Sheridan Park Neighbors, which is I know you've seen my page. I got Sheridan Park Neighbors. Yeah, I've had it for about four years. There's hundreds of people on there, and it's uh, and that's separate from this. This is a new community organization, which is um, kind of started up by a, a few people, and it's just really, it's really odd. It's almost like a parallel thing. They don't, you know, they're they're more about caps. It's kind of attached to the caps meeting, but it's yeah. kind of like it's a community meeting. And I went there last night. Just um, like if they've been trying to do it for about. Six meetings in a row, and each one is like less and less people. And it's really mm. strange. And I tell you something, people, everybody's all upset over the last election. You know, they're upset Trump has got in there. Not, they're not happy. A lot of people aren't happy with the, the way things worked out. You know, Bernie people aren't happy. Nobody's happy, and everybody wanted to change. You know, look at this show. Look at what you're trying to do. People need to pay more attention to the local. If you want to change, start small. Start from exactly but right. Does it the opposite? And you look at the uh, turnout in Chicago was awesome for the president. What was it seventy some percent or something? Uh, yeah, it was terrific. Except you know what? It's you're right. There, there's a, you know, I learned a, I, I, one time I was talking. We were talking. We were talking politics. I think it was in synagogue of all things. Of course, we talk a lot of politics in synagogue between services, and um, the. Um, the guy, one guy was telling me, and I thought about this. He said he really hopes that Jan Schakowsky, who he hates, runs for U.S. Senate. And I go, why would you want to see that? And he said, well, as a congressman, she affects my life very little. But a U.S. senator, she'll affect my life even less. And I went, huh? He says, who affects my life? Does the governor affect my life? Not very much. Does my state senator affect my life? Maybe a little bit. My state representative, he's all, he's all busy doing other things. He says, who really affects my life? The mayor affects it some. The alderman is who really affects it. Yeah, that's the guy who's going to mess with your, <laughs> with your block, you know, and, and your life. And it, is, it really makes a big difference. And, you know, especially the state. People under, you know, you see it in the turnout. You see it in the interest. You know, that's kind of how things are. People are worried about, you know, the, bad, the wrong people taking over. It's because people are paying attention to the wrong things or are just not paying attention. And, yeah, and it's, um, it's a real shame, you know. And, uh, you know, there's, like, never going to be another party on either side. I mean, I don't know if there should be another party. If we can't get two parties right, why are we going to get three parties right? You're not. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, if you think about it, it's not just about the number of parties. It's about civic engagement, and people wonder why. You know, why, um, you know, people in Chicago don't understand what's going on west of Peoria, you know? Yeah, one of the main reasons I don't want to see extra... <laughs> they don't know what's going on in their neighborhood. By the way, one of the reasons I don't want to see extra parties are things or are, are already radical enough between the two parties. Uh -huh. And I, I'm a big believer in moderation. People have to get along. People should sit down. People should iron out their differences without fighting, without punching. 
verbally or uh, physically. Yeah. We haven't gotten to punches yet. You know, like, you know, never know. You know. Um, it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little. You know, but well, I hope not. You know what? I really hope not. But these. Well, um, it's getting ugly. You know. I mean, you got these professional demonstrators now. You know, I was reading the, the anti-Trump rally in Portland. There were 121 people um, arrested. And of the 121, they're checking the voting records on these people to oh, see if yeah. they actually voted. Uh -huh. At the very least, 69 of them either aren't registered to vote or definitely didn't vote. I'm not surprised. Okay, well, I've been, you know, I've if been you're gonna, a few uh, you know, protest rodeos. And I'll tell you, what, the people who get more upset are the people who are like going to be violent. And it's actually a pretty small amount when you think about it. They're usually the more anarchic type type of yeah. folks and they're usually the ones that like you see them all on Facebook saying don't vote don't vote for anybody don't vote for anybody it's like you know for somebody who ain't interested you're you know the, the thing is about some people think okay a protest vote okay what do they say half of the people didn't vote right yeah how many of those were protest votes who the hell knows who cares okay so now you just <laughs> lined yourself yeah. up with the people on the couch not paying attention playing video games you're all the same category and those are the people who tend so I'm, I'm surprised even half of them voted for the people that got arrested but, you know, a lot of people focus, and, you know, you see this. No, actually, half of them, it's for sure more than most of them didn't. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, overall, as far as the protesters, I saw tens of thousands of people. And here's the thing that goes on. I mean, and it's not just protests. It's almost everything. And, you know, I talk about the media and, like, what shows and what goes. What's happening out there and what's, like, being shown. It's just like anything else. Okay, take Wrigley Field. Okay, yeah. as a structure, as a game, as an event. In the heart of Wrigley Field, you know, they got a security office with a lockup. That, and that lockup gets use, you know. Sometimes they got to pack them in there a few when there's a few too many yep. people too imbibed in alcohol before and during they get there. They get all rowdy. But nobody defines Wrigley Field or the Cubs by these assholes. Or excuse my French, you can do sure. that. But nobody defines Wrigley Field or the Cubs or going to a baseball game by the few people who get online and get arrested. And they get arrested in a manner that is actually even uglier than the people out there. I just see some teenager kicking over a, a, a planter and breaking a store window. That looks ugly, but not as ugly as a middle-aged guy drunk and out of shape on a hot day drunk. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> fighting with another guy, getting arrested. That's yeah. what a Cubs game is like, every Cubs game. But we don't define, and you know, if you look at, like, the society as a general, we, we kind of define each other by our worst examples, you know, and that's something we kind of got to get used to because, you know, you saw that. And the weird thing, I was actually at the Trump rally when he was here, and I got to tell you, um, you know, some of that happened with them too, um, with the Trump, when, um, you know, the cameras went to Trump rallies, you know, I mean, there were some bad characters in there, and you were more likely to get on TV if you were a bad character than if you sure. were just a nice, well-mannered sitting there going to the Trump rally just to see what's going on. So it happens both ways. It's not just, you know, how they're picking on us, you know, wacky left types. So it's kind of like everybody. But, I, you know, the paid protester thing, um, you know, there's a Murphy's Law about the more people know about something, the more likely it is to get out, to no way to get... You know, and it would take so many people, okay, just hiring people for an event, 100 people to keep them. How are you going to pay thousands of people without somebody posting up with their check and buying an uh, iPod with it or, or iPad or something? You know what I mean? It's like, it, it can't just be a rumor. It's like if it's thousands of people getting paid, there would just be so much hard circumstantial evidence that some people, but there's nobody getting paid. The closest thing to getting paid might be a sandwich and a bus ride. Well, it depends who. I mean, with the Black Lives Matter, it's... Um there definitely were paid professional protesters. But that was on a different level. The, this, the Trump thing yeah. is a whole different story. That's kind of a wave of emotion. You yeah. know, it's going to be interesting to see when things Listen, actually happen. You know, God, God forbid, I hope things <laughs> calm down as much as possible. Uh, he will In the meantime, well, while, you know. i got to tell you, we're, 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 Mickey's, Mickey's hands are telling me we're out of time and we could probably have talked longer. I wish you showed up earlier. We would have talked longer. I know. Because yeah. I gave the other guy your time because I wasn't sure you were coming. I know. I was a little late. But Sorry, guys. Anyway, <laughs> listen, check him out on Facebook, <laughs> Jeffrey Littleton. Uh, any other contact information? Yeah, uh, littletonstudio.com. I got him some uh, art. You know, I hope to be painting out Really I'm terrific painting art. art. I love this guy's art. We're out of time. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thanks, Sonny. Take care, everybody. Be well. Bye-bye.